Hey guys, still here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today I have a test. I want to see if a 55 knot destroyer is actually useful. I'm gonna go up against a US designed or US AI designed battlecruiser because the battlecruisers are usually fast too. So let's get to designing. Let's see if I can actually make this ship work. Speed, 55 knots. Now, I have encountered something that's a little weird in the past, and it might still be there. The basic steam engine just has, let's say, index 1 weight. This one, minus 5%, minus 7.5, minus 8, minus 9. Okay, so the weight should go down, right? And it does. But it doesn't go down by a little, it goes down by a lot. The engine weight is the only thing that should be affected. So this is minus 8%. Minus 9%. There's nothing that actually is going to go up. Look at how much the weight drops. This is not an additional percent. That's 300 tons. Gear turbines. Minus 10% engine weight. Okay. Check. It goes down. Diesel. Minus 22.5% engine weight. Boom. 3,254. I think that this might be a bug. I'm not sure. Uh, but I will send it in, because I don't think that this is exactly how it should be. Um, and if you go diesel engines 2, it's back at 2900. So this one, minus 22.5. This one, minus 27.5. And for some reason now it's manageable. Anyway, I'm going to go with the geared steam turbines, because they give me the maximum horsepower per ton at 30.5. Krupp armor, as little as possible, or at least as light as possible. Um, auxiliary weight. Turning rate is very nice, but the engine weight's going to go up again. Shaft. Uh, faster turning, but not only that, also 15% acceleration. Let's go for oil, because it saves me a little bit on weight. Back to 2487. Now, forced boilers, I think, because I'm going to be running these engines pretty hard in order to get up to that speed. All right, so DD heavy or um, torpedo heavy build, because I'm gonna try and use those, especially the guns, I don't think are particularly useful. If not, if I'm going up against the battle cruiser. So yeah, I'll give her a couple of uh, four inch, one on the bow, one on the stern, but it's more because I want to have a few guns and the game is gonna force me to have at least one. Rear tower eight also actually allows me to fit a gun. How far can I slide that back? Quite a bit. Okay. Right then. 2800 out of 3200. Large funnel. That puts my engine efficiency at only 50%. So I'd need to add another one. And there we go. Ship is overweight. This is what I was worried about. Now I might be able to fix that by lowering the range. Uh, I may be lowering the bulkheads. But I'm... Yeah, I'm kind of there. I have 9 tons less for a torpedo tube. So that's not quite going to fit. If I reduce displacement, I think the problem is not going to go away. No, in fact, the problem got a little worse. Uh, let's see. These are large funnels. This is 48 funnel capacity for 246 tons. This is 45 for 221. So this is 3 funnel capacity for, th for about 22 tons. So I get 10% weight difference for three funnel capacity, which is about 10%. Arguably, that would make the angled funnels better. The enhanced angled funnel. This one is 173, 35. Yeah, the problem is they're just going to take up a lot of room. If I go with two of these, how bad or how good is it going to be? I'm overweight. 52. Building one of these is always going to be a challenge. It's never going to go easy. If I up the displacement to max... What? Cannot build. Above the weight displacement for 1DD, 3,500 tons. But I'm... <laughs> I am a destroyer. So, <laughs> I don't know what the problem is here. But sure, if you want to do 3,500 tons, we'll do 3,500 tons. Engine efficiency, not great. I still have a little bit left for a torpedo turret. 
or torpedo set, if you will. Uh, yeah, I can actually do this, but they're only 18-inch torpedoes. Only. These things reload very quick in 120 seconds. These reload in 600 seconds, so yeah, it doesn't really matter. Mm. I want this ship to actually do 55 knots. So while I'm very tempted to install either more torpedo tubes or try various other... Oh, hold on. I might be able to salvage some weight here. Yeah, that's what I should do. Reduce the guns to just a single two inch. It's not going to save me a ton of weight, but it will save me some. The secondary tower helps with aiming speed, long range accuracy and the such. But I'm firing torpedoes. This is not what I need. I just need this rear tower. That's going to put me back almost nothing. What was that? 45 tons. See? Easy. And a two incher right on the stern. Uh, four weight offset is a bit high. I can shrink it down a bit. Engine efficiency 49%. Engine efficiency 98.1. Four weight offset. A lot. There's not that much that I can do about that beyond just moving the funnels over. 98. Offset, 0 0.1. Yeah, that's too heavy. There. Okay, in that case, I'm going to go with a uh, quadruple here and another quadruple over there. And that puts me very close to the weight. Um, it's going to be an experimental mode. So if I get hit, I get hit. That's just the way it goes. I will die. But I'm wondering how accurate a ship can fire at me if I'm doing 55 knots. And I will get there. I will absolutely get there. Shells? What are these shells you speak of? I don't need shells where I'm going. Increased torpedo armament? Mm, I'd probably be dead before then. Either I'm dead, or the battlecruiser's dead. But there are definitely not going to be any survivors here. No, that's too much. Uh, belt armor? No, maybe radar is better, but it's probably he pretty heavy. Yeah, it's too heavy. It would allow me to see the enemy before they see me, or at least get a little bit more information about them. Alright, here we go. She's capable of doing 55 knots on paper. Let's see if she can do that in practice. Now, I do really wonder if it's going to be possible to do this with the diesel engines, if they're fixed. Enemy smoke spotted north. Asanagi head north. Current speed, 43.2. Whoa, she accelerates really nicely. Sure, she's uh, a little deep in the waves. Sea conditions are not too bad. Calm wind, calm waves, calm weather. She'll be fine. But this is not what fine looks like as far as I'm concerned. Look at how much the deck is awash. Is that normal? Is that really normal? I don't know. Does it look as bad from the front? No, it looks worse from the front. <laughs> the whole midships. It just goes under. Yeah, I would not want to be aboard one of these things. Thank you very much. I'll pass. Alright, let's go and find the enemy. 20,000 meters. It should go pretty quick. Oh shit, I have been spotted. So that US battlecruiser definitely has radar. First shells are coming in. Start to weave. Yep, we're actually doing 55 knots. Now, I didn't adjust the torpedo type at all, which is something I should have looked at, but 14.7 should be plenty. She is technically in range. 
But how accurate I'm going to be, I have no idea. Yeah. Oh dear. Ooh, I got a little close. Let's say I want to link up with... Well, not link up, but I want to get to that ship. Um, just look at how fast that thing is. The Asanagi I'm talking about, not the other one. She is more or less on a straight line course. Current distance, 10 4. Now, what prompted this is that somebody asked, Is this useful? 55 knots. And the answer is, I don't know. Oh, I launched torpedoes some while ago. Apparently. Hold on. My torpedoes are slow. Ish. They can do 48 knots. The ship can do 55. So, arguably, if I launched my torpedoes not too long ago, then they're somewhere behind me. Or, if they were launched here and the battlecruiser is moving that way, I could run into my own torpedoes somewhere in this region. Yeah, I'm going to have to be quite careful with that. But it also means that the Asanagi, at the moment, cannot take offensive action. Well, beyond trying to pepper the decks and maybe shoot down uh, a lifeboat with two-inch guns. But I think that's about the only thing. <laughs> I am speed. <laughs> well, that's not for lack of trying. 11-6. 11-8. 12. Don't hit me! Oof. That looked like it came really close. Range. 13. 13-1. Identification is proceeding. Which is excellent because I'll also be, oh, or not, able to tell whether that ship is armed with defensive measures such as uh, radar or not. It's a battlecruiser, it won't have hydro or sonar, that's what I was initially worried about, but it won't be a problem. See, torpedoes are almost reloaded. I'd ideally just wait a little longer get the torpedoes ready, and also get the smoke screen ready. So I'm going to charge in through my own smoke. And try and drop off torpedoes close to the battlecruiser. Also, I want full identification so I can see what their accuracy is. <laughs> I can get used to this. I mean, the ship is... Is hideous, <laughs> pretty much. It's just eight torpedo tubes, a couple of two inch. Oh no! Aww, it's two inch guns and uh, no more destroyer. Well, she only get had to get lucky once. All right, rematch. I wasn't expecting to actually launch those torpedoes. Propellant. Um. Electrics. That, gets, that will make them even slower, though. 36.5. No, if I'm going to deliver those to that battlecruiser at short range, I want them to be fast torpedoes. That's 62.5. Rematch. Enemy smoke to the north. Off we go. Whoa, I've already been detected. Definitely here. So once again, she has radar. Now, of course, in an actual campaign, and that's kind of what I was testing for, is this ship going to be useful? Um... I don't really think so. At least not in your usual direct combat role. Sure enough, it'll be damaging. It'll be capable of dishing out quite a bit of damage. 
against mostly unarmored, undefended targets. Anything that's even remotely capable of returning fire, let alone, I mean, a battlecruiser is a bad target. Um, a battleship is potentially worse. Cruisers, mm, no joy either. The only thing that you could probably use the ship against is a convoy. Because you can just race in with your 55 knots and either build it as a gunboat or as a torpedo boat. And you just dash in, drop your torps, dash out. So you're mm, sort of building an interceptor. Range. 12. I still need to get quite a bit closer. And my torpedo range is 7-7. Seven, seven. So for the moment, I'm going to have to be pretty much steaming towards that ship. Let's see, do I lose speed in the zigzags? I don't. A bit. I lost 0.2 knots doing that starboard turn. Range, 9-8. Don't hit me. For the moment, it was just the main guns. But now I'm now approaching 8 kilometer range. And now those secondaries are looking at me all angry like. And they are probably going to open up really soon. My notification is only 35%, so I really don't even know what he's firing at me with. Probably 6 inch. Oh, and a lot of it. Just dodge. Way to go. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. Don't min-max your games. Play your games. That's what they're here for. If you want to min-max something, get a job. I like to play. And especially with a kid on the way, I think that's a oh, good mentality to have. Range, 5-9-er. Hard starboard. Range, 5-5. Five, five. Looks like I dinked a hit. Yeah, I got hit. I, it, it even ricocheted off of my non-existent armor. 5-0. Oh. Torpedoes oh. away. Any day now. Yes? No, maybe. I'm taking hits. Launch, damn you. Thank you. Torpedoes away. I'll be leaving now. Before you do even worse. Help! Turn. The turn only pushed my speed down to 53 knots. That's actually remarkably good. Okay, we now have identification on the ship. We're fighting the Sentinel. Let's pause that because I need to manually duck and weave with this ship. The Sentinel. 2.3% chance to hit me. 1.8, 1.714. She is built with standard amount of bulkheads on a ship that weighs 40,900 tons. Armor is not that good. Belt and belt extended could be a problem for the torpedoes. They'll mitigate it a bit, I think. Uh, what else can you tell me? Anti-Torpedo 3, oh. Okay. Triple hull bottom. Reinforced bulkheads 1. Anti-Flot 3. Wow. It's like you're protecting yourself from a torpedo attack. Hard starboard. No, sorry, that's hard to port. I'm looking at it in reverse. Back to starboard. Has she detected the torpedoes at all? Yes, she has. She's trying to evade by turning to starboard, but I'm not sure if that's going to work. Oh no! Oh, just above the ship. Accuracy on her, 1, 5, 1, 1, and 1, 3. Now, for those of you who are asking, is 55 knots useful? Yes. I would say yes. Because normally, a ship like this, with, I think it has radar, generation 2 radar, Stereoscopic Rangefinder 4. It should be hitting me left, right, and center. But I have this extreme speed. 
And I'm ducking and weaving like a crazy person. And so far, it seems to be working. The first time around, that battlecruiser might have gotten lucky. Alright, we're going to land two torpedoes. These three narrowly missed. The Sentinel is flooding, but I don't think that that's going to be any serious damage on her. Because she has that anti-torpedo belt, which mitigated the damage, and then she has decent bulkheads, and she has systems to pump out the water. But... She will get damage instability, I think. And she'll be easier to hit. Because of a lack of speed and currently a lack of a rudder. But how long that's going to be that way, we'll just have to see. Accuracy? 0.8. Now there is potentially one more tactic that you can use on a ship like this. And that is to... Constantly duck and weave and hope that the ship runs out of ammo. Because she's packing 677 shells. She reloads in 50 seconds. So we're going to be doing this dance for a while. But if you have the time. And if you are really up to a challenge. You might be able to get away with this. Just let the ship run out of ammo. Now I'm just doing the whole ducking and weaving until I get out of range. Which probably won't happen because she has a range of 32 kilometers. Uh, or until I die. Or until I rearm. I still need a bit more time for my smoke screen to cool down. So we've inflicted some damage on the battle cruiser, but I'm going to need to land more torpedoes. The damage instability might not be enough yet to make this ship, well, not incapable of hitting me, but at least give it a harder time to hit me. I do wonder, what do you guys think is a good tactic for this ship? When would... look at that drift. When would you use a ship that can do 55 <laughs> knots in a Tokyo drift? Uh, when... <laughs> I like speedy ships. When can you use this type of ship? What role would you give it? Let me know down below in the comment section. I am eager to see what you guys come up with. And of course, keep in mind that this can now also be a very interesting boat to use in scenario. If this is something that you can work into a scenario that you might have already suggested, but you can now adjust, then by all means, go for it. Alright, Asanagi, torpedoes have been reloaded. 11-3 to target. Required range 7-7. Seven, seven. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Smoke screen up. It's going to make it even more difficult. 10-3, 10-2, 10-1. Hard starboard. She's reloaded. Firing again. Accuracy 0.5. But again, she doesn't need to get lucky often. She just needs to get lucky once. And the Asanagi is going to be sent to the bottom. Here come the 4-inch guns. If she had bigger secondaries, I would be in a world of hurt. If these were not 4-inch guns, but let's say 8-inch or 6-inch, she could be firing far, far more accurately than she currently is. Accuracy is going up to 1%. Range is in torpedo range. Oh, I got hit. It's going to cut my speed, potentially. This is the... Uh, as far as I'm concerned, edge of your seat type of ship. It's never a dull moment when you're moving around with a ship like this. Accuracy is now 2%, but there's a lot of guns over there. Ah, no. That can do all sorts of damage. She got hit once, or twice maybe, and that's her gone. Uh, retry? No. Is this ship useful at 55 knots? Mm, potentially. It will depend on how you use it. Now, I was using these short-range torpedoes, the fast ones. You could use the longer-range ones and just use it as a speed kiter. Send torpedoes. 
especially the oxygen field ones, will get to the target. Uh, hope that you get some hits and just run like the wind. Or, well, potentially faster than the wind, depending on the gaze. Or gale. Anyway, I'm interested to see what you guys come up with. What sort of design or what sort of application would you have for a ship like this? Let me know down below in the comments. And I'd eager, I'm eager to see what you guys come up with. Hope you enjoyed the vid. Let me know what you think of the Tokyo Drifting Destroyer from the Empire of Japan. And I shall see you guys soon again for another video from Ultimate Admiral.